I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our Microsoft Access playlist, and I want to talk about how to use with and end with, which is a nice, easy way to clean up uh, lots of very repetitive code, and it makes your code look really nice, and it makes it easy to understand. So without further ado, let's get to our with and with in Microsoft Access. Are you a programmer looking for your next gig? Make sure to check out the links in the description. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, same file we've used for a few of our other demonstrations, and I've sort of filtered the list out here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a blank form, um, and I'm going to go to Design View, and then what I'm going to put on here is I'm just going to put, uh, you know, uh, like a text box, for example. Um, this is a good a good example of where you know uh, with gets used a lot, um, uh, or where you get a lot of repetitive commands is with any kind of object, whether it's a drop down list or or you know uh, you know something else like a list box or something. But a text box will do for today. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I've got this text box. I've got it on my you know on my form, and I'm going to go to the properties there. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the name of this text box. I'm just going to call it TXT text, and that should just about do it. Um, I just want it to have a name that makes sense, you know, when we go to go to program around it. So I'll save that, and I'll just call it my with form. There we go, and it'll show up in the list on the left because I filtered that. And if I, you know, if I open it, I can, you know, just punch in some numbers. You guys are probably all familiar with that. I just wanted to show that. And uh, I'll go back here, and you can see this is we've got our text box ready to go. And then I'll go ahead and close that, and I'll I'll go create module, and uh, and then this is a new module, um, so it's basically some code that you can write, uh, either a sub or a function if you wanted to, and I'll just call it you know this sub setup uh, form. So you can imagine if you had some uh, some code. That was you know running in your application it could be in the form code in this case i'm using a module it doesn't really matter you can use with in both places um, you can use with actually in vba just about anywhere not just in access you can use it in excel as well anything that is using objects that can be manipulated or you know using uh, you know their properties or you know attributes and methods or functions those kinds of things um, you can um, you can use with and so what I'm going to do here is I'll call this module uh, with module and you can see now it appears in the navigation on the left we've got a form and a module and uh, I all I did is I put an expression that said you know the value of that text box is hey hello everyone so there we go if I pull that up again it says hello everyone so um, so now if I just put my cursor and I hit run, you can see, okay, there we go. It says, hello, everyone. And so that's, you know, we're setting one, uh, we're setting the value of the text box in this case or the text of the text box. Uh, but in a lot of cases when you're programming, you know, programmers will do all kinds of stuff. They'll, they'll change the colors of, of an object and do all this other stuff. And, and, you know, or on a record set, you could be doing different things. You know, if you were using with, with a record set, you can also do that. Um, you're doing all kinds of actions and things. And so uh, what you might end up seeing, and if you see this, what's happening, what I'm typing here. So now I've set the text the four color to blue and I'm setting the back color to yellow and I could set like a hundred other properties and or I could get the text box to do something uh, but if I hit go and you can see there it changed the you know change what's happening there but if I set like you know like 12 different things well you can imagine um, this would be a huge long list with all this text and it, you can imagine it would be even worse if it was on a subform. It would be even longer. It'd be like txt.text.subform. Dot blah blah blah. Um, so there's ways you can get around it. And one of the ways is you can go, you know, set form equal to forms with form, and then you can replace that forms uh, with form. Uh, you can replace that 
with that FRM, and that'll make it shorter and make it look nice, uh, nicer. Um, if you have like, you know, like 20 lines that's repeating the same stuff. But you can also use, uh, you can use width. And width is a really nice feature of VBA. And uh, so what we'll do here is we'll, we'll say width forms, uh, width form txt text. Um, and then we'll go end width. And that's going to create a block where, um, where everything that we do, if we use the exclamation or dot, uh, if we use it without, you know, anything in front of it, um, the, you know, it knows that that's for txt, uh, txt text. Um, and so uh, I can go here, for example, and I can just put in dot text. And as you can see, it'll make that line a lot shorter and it removes a whole bunch of characters from our text. So I can also go, you know, um, dot four color, I can go dot back color, I can change all kinds of things on this object, depending on what kind of object it is. And as you can see, it shortens the amount of VBA that you write, and it makes it a lot nicer and cleaner to look at. And so now if I open my form, and I, you know, grab my code there, and if my code runs, you know, maybe you called it with a button or whatever, um, you can see that it will generate that um, and it'll it'll run all those commands um, and it looks a lot nicer and it's cleaner and easier to read and you can use this kind of stuff with uh, you know all kinds of objects so we could have stopped with um, we could have stopped with forms with form and then end with and uh, and that would have given us you know access to the form as you can see if I you know do the dot I can I can choose all kinds of different stuff that is related to the form. Um, so as you can see, it's different things than you know when when I had specified the text box. Now I'm just looking at the form, um, you know, attributes and methods. Um, and so I can say you know dot caption. Here's my form, and you know I could do other stuff like maybe uh, remove the um, navigation buttons. Uh, or something like that, you know, so now I can, you know, remove the navigation button. So that'll remove the little VCR buttons at the bottom for those of you know, that know what a VCR is. And I could remove the record selectors along the left-hand side. That's that little arrow that you see on the left side of the form. Like maybe we don't want to have that, you know. So now if I run my, you know, my procedure, you can see uh, that, you know, now it's changed the, the caption. Now there's no navigation buttons or or uh, record selectors on that form and so it cleans up the code nicely in a way that that you know makes it nice and easy to read and there's our uh, you know there's our record selector and our navigation buttons and I should note that uh, you cannot nest these um, oh I broke it so okay yeah so you have to set control so we could add another command in there if, if it is not uh, if the focus is not set to that control in order to set the text. So I could say dot set focus and that's a good example. So now I can add one command. I don't have to type out that huge thing. And if I run it now, you can see it changes the focus. It gives the focus to that text box. And so you can see that that's uh, really awesome to use. Um, going back to what I was saying, you can't cannot nest these uh, commands, you know, like you can with a do loop or something like that. But you can have like a whole ton of different, you know, um, rows in there or lines of code that basically will make your it'll make your life easier and and it make makes it a lot easier to understand. And that is how you can use with and with in Microsoft Access VBA. Need help or coaching on your project? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to use with and with in Microsoft Access. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, click the bell when you see the bell, and if you have any questions or comments, put those in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.